श्री गुरुभ्यो नम विद्यापीठ विधात विद्यावारधि चंदर विद्यार्थिवत्सल वंदे महामहिम सद्गु श्री गुरुभ्यो नम इन दीविय पार्ट वि लर्न हाउ पूर्णप्रज्ञ तीर्थ स्वामीजी गेन्ड विक्ट्री ओवर मेनी अद्वैती पांडिट्स एंड अदर एमिनेंट स्कॉलर्स फ्रम ऑल ओवर द कंट्री दिस poem this kavya sumadhi vijaya it was a history it is a history actually it is something which happened some hundreds of years ago but it is actually a work of art and really an effective mantra to relieve all the stress to retrieve the afflicted and it leads the reader of this kavya to the way of salvation in the fourth sarga we saw how purnapagna tirtha swami ji he though he was a small child when he took the sanyasa ashrama he was the heir to the throne of great uttradimat parampara yet he didn't simply teach some stupid ascetism he became the founder of the great madhva philosophy and he led a simple life but with great thinking he almost he he almost put complete efforts on teaching he preached the madhva philosophy he imbibed the philosophy of our philosophy of our madhva into the minds of people and removed all the doubts regarding the other stalwart philosophies from the minds of people the fifth sarga what we are starting it is it actually we can divide the fifth sarga into two parts the first part describes as madhvacharyas his uh, victories with the great buddhist uh, people with uh, his uh, with the disputations with the vedic scholars as well as with the enemies of vedas also madhvacharya with his intellectual skills baffled and puzzled all the opponents now coming to the second section of this sarga here we find madhvacharyas victories and his southern tour his digvijaya in the southern parts of the country many places are mentioned which madhvacharya visited in his southern tour some of the places are vishnu mangalam which we today consider it as kasargod ananta shayanam or trivandrum kanyakumari rameshwaram srirangam shrimushnam and many other holy places when madhvacharya visited vishnu mangalam a devotee he had already heard about madhvacharya's supernatural parts so he wanted to test in order to do that he brought a huge stock of 200 full green plantains and asked madhvacharya to consume it just after having his full meal to the astonish of astonishment of the whole crowd madhvacharya simply took one 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 plantain one after the another and consumed it and within no matter of time he consumed the entire food without even slightest sign of exertion or some uh, some exertion achuta priksha tirtha who was also accompanying watched it very anxiously he was also worried a very much the devotee after looking at this he realized his mistake and he fell on the feet of madhvacharya and we all know about madhvacharya's kindness he simply pardoned the devotee and sent him away achuta priksha tirtha was very much anxious enough he was also accompanying madhvacharya so to his astonishment and anxiety he inquired madhvacharya as to how could he consume the huge meal without even slightest sign of exertion madhvacharya then answered the answer was mentioned in the verse at angushta matram jatare pratishtitam in this verse madhvacharya tells us that the flame of jataragni the flame of the digestive heat in me i mean in madhvacharya is as big as a thumb it is capable enough to set a blaze to set fire to the whole country and the power is still under my whole control my soul control this process is 
possessed in me this power is possessed in me by the grace of lord narayana lord vishnu for everyone's information the jetaragni the digestive heat in each and every human being is as small as just a spark but the jetaragni in madhvacharya is as big as a thumb so the small spark the such a small spark is very much responsible for the complete digestive process in our body even in agneya purana it means the word vrika means agni and the lord bhima got the name vrikodara because even he had the jetaragni he had the digestive heat he had vruka agni as his digestive heat hence vrikodara was hence bhi lord bhima got the name vrikodara and we all know bhima and madhvacharya both are the incarnations of lord vaideva itself so when we consider this it is no surprise that madhvacharya was able to eat a, able to eat a huge amount of food huge stock of food at a similar at a single time this way he showed madhvacharya showed his supernatural powers to the devotee slowly after after passing away for, after moving forward in the course of his tour madhvacharya entered kerala there he visited many places on the holy banks of river payaswini the poet the poet narayana pandita chare explains about his stay at trivandrum in a few verses there what happened the, the there in in trivandrum a heated argument took place between madhvacharya and the then pontiff of shankar mat shankaracharya's mat the points the points no one would compromise on each other's points and they simply parted their ways in each other's direction madhvacharya continued his onward journey to kanyakumari and from there he reached rameshwaram again coincidentally at rameshwaram madhvacharya and the pontiff of shankaracharya's mat they met again there again a huge dispute took place between the two but the same way there was no there was no way the dispute could be ended no one could agree on each other's terms and they immediately they went back after completing the chaturmasya at rameshwara madhvacharya went to the famous place shri rangam the poet describes the place of shri rangam in the few verses he explains the atmospheric beauty the 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 holy atmosphere which pervades in and outside of shri rangam the pleasant sweet smelling of the fruits of the flowers and the sweet smell the pleasant smell of the garland which was which which lord ranganatha wore the holy river kaveri the, the indescribably beautiful and charming look of lord ranganatha itself and especially the soulful joy which is reflected on the faces of the people who just had darshan of lord ranganatha all these are explained very much magnificently very much marvelously all these are pictured by a master poet from shri rangam madhvacharya proceeded to the holy place of shri mushnam actually before visiting shri mushnam he visited different places of importance towards the north and finally he reached shri mushnam it is shri mushnam it is one of the swayam vyakta kshetra of the lord in india and the lord here is known by two names the one is bhuvaraha and another is yagnavaraha the bhuvaraha the deity bhuvaraha it is depicted in this way the glorious mula murthi his hands magnificently resting on his hip with the face of lord varaha and his face turned slightly to his left this is the glorious mula murthi which is known as bhu varaha swami the yagna varaha swami is the indescribably charming utsava murthi which is even today known as yagna varaha tradition is that madhvacharya was so much attracted towards this enchanting smile and he, and the this is even made reference in his dwadasha stotra even today we find a holy tank uh, near shri mushnam palace which is actually depicted as a compassion 
shown by Madhvacharya towards a pregnant lady. A pregnant lady, as we all know, the southern parts are very much hot and no one could bear the starching heat of the sun during the summers and all. A pregnant lady, she was very much in search of water. She couldn't find a single drop of water anywhere nearby. So Madhvacharya, who was on his way to Sri Mushnam, he found that lady. So, in order to depict the compassion, even today we find a holy tank where the pregnant lady, she resolved her thirst. Sri Mushnam, when we calculate it geographically, it is almost 38 kilometers from Chidambaram or uh, from Rudhachalam, if you go to Sri Mushnam by bus, we, it is almost a journey of around 23 to 25 kilometers. There, nearby, we find the holy tank even today. On his way back, he reached again to Viva Payaswini. During the tour, he encountered many pundits of eminence and established the position of the foremost exponent of Vedas. No one could even touch Vedas without passing Madhvacharya's arguments and oppositions. This sarga, this canto ends with the triumphant return of the hero in his southern tour. Acharya had already his Digvijaya emerged in the southern part of the country and maintaining his view against the contemporaries and stalwarts of other philosophies. In the sarga, we get to know various other names given to Madhvacharya on certain occasions. This sarga, it commences with the reference to the Vedanta Pathabhisheka of Purnabodha. Madhacharya got the name Purnabodha. Buddha means knowledge. Purnabodha means complete knowledge. Not just simply complete knowledge. He had complete and accurate knowledge of the Lord. And he was the one to imbibe this knowledge to, into the minds of the people. He was even given the title Ananda Tirtha because he was the reason of our happiness and he was born to give happiness to each and every soul. Achyuta Preksha Tirtha Swamiji, he gave the title, he gave the title Anumana Tirtha to Madhvacharya after defeating many uh, Buddhist adversaries. In an another verse, he, uh, there is also reference of Madhvacharya as Sukha Tirtha. Family, even uh, this name is even familiar to us by uh, in the in the famous Totra of Dvadasha Stotra and is figuratively compared to Achyuta Preksha uh, as he defeated the opponents. Similarly, uh, Madhvacharya got the name Brahmati for depicting mass intellectual skills. He also he is also known as Sanmoda Tirtha uh, because he gave joy to good and sattvic souls. Amandadhi is another given another name given to Madhvacharya, which he got on the content of worshipping Sri Ranganatha. This way, this sarga, we find it quite interesting on account of many titles given to Madhvacharya, which were very much appropriate enough for him on many occasions. These titles were given to Madhvacharya because he was the young star rising on the horizon which was admired by it, each and every being of that time. It mainly describes the, this sarga mainly describes the intellectual parts, the supernatural parts, the force of Madhvacharya's arguments which no one could bear and the, uh, the uh, arguments were completely straightforward and the words, the sutras, the sentences were pronounced so clearly that no one could raise any objections to Madhvacharya's arguments. Such was Madhvacharya's skills because whatever he says once, that was final and no one could dare change it. Let us finally turn to the divine being of Madhvacharya, help us cross this whirling ocean of this samsara, of this uh, materialistic life and take us to the great salvation, to the feet of Lord Vishnu, the divine being. Thank you. Shri Krishna Arpanamastra.